Hello and welcome to AAA Reviews. I'm Alex and today I am going to be reviewing Series 1 Spider-Man Toy Biz action figures from the animated TV series released in 1994. Today whilst doing some rummaging I came across this Spider-Man Panini sticker book in mint condition, no stickers being put in it, with a free pack of stickers. How cool is that? Um, this TV series was out in 1994. We had other TV series, such as this 1964 version. We had the version um, which came out with Spider-Man, uh, Iceman and Starfire. Um, so there was lots of versions, but this, for me, was the best version. And being a 90s kid, growing up in the 90s, this was second best probably to the X-Men TV series, but it was wow they was just so good and there were so many cameos in this the x-men were even in this tv series so today i'm going to be doing series one if you haven't already please hit a like please subscribe please turn on notifications and please share with your friends to help this channel grow i would really appreciate it and with that said let's get on with this review okay so starting off this review we have got the web shooter um, Spider-Man with web projectile. It does limit his articulation, so in one arm you can bend the elbow on the left, but on the right hand side his arm sort of uh, one length. That's because you sort of can pull the web back in, which is down here. A really cool representation of the figure and the character from the cartoon. So a really good Spider-Man overall. Um, interesting fact for you, if you didn't know this, he is voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes throughout the TV series, which ran for 65 episodes across five seasons. Um, and an interesting fact, Daniel Barnes also voiced Prince Eric in The Little Mermaid. So if you didn't know that, you do now. Price-wise, this Spider-Man comes in at $35 in the US, £50 in the UK, and $50 in Canada. That's your average price. They can be higher, they can be lower, but this is the average cost, depending on where you live. And Lucy comes in at $15 US, £11 UK, pounds, or $30 in Canada. So there are your average price range for this figure up we have got dr octopus absolutely awesome now i had this loose as a child i picked it up from a little comic book store for like five uk pounds out of the packet many many years ago i was probably about nine or ten and i remember being so excited he's got a really cool feature it's like a plunger on his back and as you pull it the tentacles draw in tighter and you can loosen them a really cool villain massive um throughout the tv series he was in it an, an awful lot um he was voiced by ephraim symbolist now i don't know if i pronounced that right but i am going to pop it up on screen so you can see it for yourself this is as retro as it gets this character now he is extremely difficult to find he's really rare in the us we could not find any examples in the uk we could only find one example for a hundred pounds and in canada he came in at 80 dollars loose we found examples in america at 32 dollars i managed to find just two examples one at 15 pounds and one at 30 pounds and in canada loose he was coming in at 40 dollars he's definitely from series one the most difficult one to find and get hold of although nate did come in with a really good um example that if you look for the double pack um you will possibly find him in a double pack a little bit easier but yes there is dr octavius next up we've got alistair smythe criminal inventor uh, voiced by Maxwell Caulfield, the evil inventor was wheelchair bound in the TV series after an explosion. He then helped Kingpin build all kinds of um, evil things really to try and take out and build Spider-Man, including a spider slayer. He later on in the TV series, of course, betrays the Kingpin. And so the Kingpin and Herbert Langdon mutate Smythe and take away his free will. Um, he later gets his free will back and he goes after Norman Osborn for the disappearance of his father. In his mutated form, which is what we've got here, um, Smythe has super enhanced strength and laser guns from the Cybertronics they put into his body, which they sort of come out of these sort of stems that are sticking out the top. What would you pay for Smythe in 2021? Well, the average price in the US is $30. In the UK, he comes in at £35. And in Canada, he comes in at 
$40. Loose in the US, he comes in on average at $16. In the UK, I was unable to find an example. And in Canada, he comes in loose at around $30. Overall, he's a pretty good figure, um, a, a good interpretation of the mutated Smythe. The only thing I will say is articulation isn't great, so his arms do not bend with this particular figure. It's just his knees and of course his elbow. And I think there's a bit of articulation um, in the neck. But there you go, there is Smythe. Let there be carnage. So we've just had the movie, um, the second Venom movie. So this seems like a really cool figure to bring you. Interestingly, he didn't appear until season three, um, episode 12, I believe. Um, Cletus Cassidy, evil, insane, um, is in Ravencroft Institute for the criminally insane. Um, and he ends up getting some symbiote on him, which turns him into carnage. So it was really cool. They don't actually allude to him being a serial killer in the cartoon, of course. But there he is. There is Carnage. What would you pay for Carnage? Well, in the US, on average, he comes in at 45. In the UK, he comes in on average at 45 pounds. And in Canada, he comes in on average at $40. In the US, loose, he comes in at $22. In the UK, I found a couple of examples at 15 pounds. However, not all came with their accessories because he has these cool snap-on accessories. And in Canada, he came in at $30 loose a really cool character um and one that i think is um strange that he's in series one because he doesn't come out in the actual animated series until season three but this is one of the ones they chose for season one but nevertheless really cool next up we have the lethal protector venom um, a really cool figure with chomping action um and that is the gimmick for this figure this is absolutely awesome so the the symbiote leaves uh, peter parker in the animated series and finds its way onto eddie brock who doesn't like peter parker and they do not like spider-man and so what do you get then a super villain to fight spider-man with he has incredible strength and he can nullify spider-man's spider sense so that is really cool um he, he is a awesome awesome character he takes out shocker and rhino when he first arrives in the animated series and the symbiote is amassed knowledge from thousands of worlds and millions of civilizations also it could survive and it is now sharing its knowledge with eddie he of course hates both spider-man and peter parker a really good figure price wise what would you pay well in the us on average he comes in at 55 dollars um, to give you kind of an idea you can find him at 40 dollars in the us or you can end up paying 63 so the average there is 55 just kind of helps you when you kind of wonder where we get our average prices from um, just sort of try to explain how it works a little bit in the uk the average price for this one is 65 pounds and in canada Canada, he comes in at $55. Loose, you can pick him up at $18 in the US, although I would warn you that a lot of the time the paintwork is damaged on this one. Um, it's something X Men creators noticed when he was doing his searching. Um, in the UK, I could not find an example. And in Canada, he came in at $30 loose. Next up, we've got the Hobgoblin, who of course is Jason Philip Masondale voiced by none other than Mark Hamill, um, a criminal mercenary with some super tech supplied by Oscorp who hires him to kill the kingpin. He of course flies on his glider hurling pumpkin bombs of which he has three types, a gas one, a concussion one which has like a shock element to it and a fragmentation one which is obviously a sort of grenade style um, pumpkin bombs. He has a laser gun, shot gloves, um, a razor bat which he later gets um, which is similar to the razor discs that he throws. He is absolutely awesome and completely evil and will do anything for money. He is a mainstay in throughout the TV series. A really cool figure um, and as retro looking as it gets, if you ask me. Now, sadly, as a child, I didn't have this one. I didn't have many of these. I did have um, one which I'll show you in a minute, which was just a small one from a packet of cereal, which I still have to this day. Price-wise, what would you pay for the Hobgoblin? Well, in the US, he comes in at $60. 
In the UK, he comes in at £75, and in Canada, he comes in at $70. However, there are very little of him around, so it's difficult to get hold of. In fact, if you're buying him in the UK, I'm pretty sure you have to import him from the US. Um, loose, he comes in at $26. In the UK, again, I couldn't find any loose domestically, so I don't tend to price them up if you're having to buy them abroad. And in Canada, he came in loose at $25. There were plenty of loose examples of him in the US and Canada, but none in the UK. Now, here's that example of that small um, one from a packet of cereal. Here we go. Where is it? This was the only hobgoblin I had, which came out of a cereal packet. I had all of the little sort of small cereal packet figures, but this is one I've managed to keep hold of. You probably remember some of them. Sadly, this was the only one I had as a child, but hey, super cool nevertheless. Next up, we have Web Racer um, Spider-Man. Really, really cool. Um, but articulation, not great because he is stuck in this position here. Um, he comes with this cool sort of um, badge of Venom of Spider-Man on it. Um, let's take a look at why it's stuck in this position. It's because you hold each end of the web string with Spidey at one end and give a tug and Spidey comes climbing up. So it's almost like a, a climbing type feature, um, but it means he's very limited. Price wise in the US, he comes in at $20. In the UK, he comes in at 50 UK pounds. And that is because you're importing him. There's just no, um, want none of him around i'm sure at the odd time it would come up and you'd be able to nab him a bit cheaper but these figures tend to sort of hold their money quite well um and in canada i don't have a price that's because nate must have missed it off his list um i'm hoping he'll just pop it up in the comments and in the us he came in loose at a 11 dollars and in the uk i did find a loose version a couple of loose versions at 15 pounds that's delivered such so your postage all the prices today include postage it doesn't matter where you live the postage is always included and we always include it because it is a cost to you. Now, of course, there were many other Spider-Man figures um, throughout the series, but this is the ones that we got in series one. As always, I'd like to thank both X-Men creators and Nate for their contribution. You can follow Nate, um, Nostalgia Nate, on Twitter, and you can follow X-Men creators on his YouTube channel, um, of which I've put links to both in the description. So there you are, that is all of Series 1, and I will bring you, of course, Series 2, Series 3, and many other Spider-Man figures in the future, so make sure you, you guys are subscribed if you're not already. Um, next week, I'm bringing you some He-Man from 2000s, because Jimmy Pham of a PH has asked me, and if I've got it and I can do it, I will, because, of course, we've got that Netflix TV series, um, Revelations Part 2, coming out soon as well, so it seems a good time to hit some more He-Man um i've also got lots more x-men lots more toy bears um more harry potter collectibles all kinds of collectibles for you guys in the next few um weeks and months so make sure you are subscribed i would really appreciate it let me know in the comments what you thought of this series because to me this is just magic this is just complete nostalgia takes me back to my childhood and it's all good um as always thank you for watching and good luck searching for that toy gold